to the show mm -hmm. and we're talking about epistaxis or nosebleeds. Now, don't worry, it's not as uh, crazy as it sounds. It's, uh, it's rarely not as crazy fatal. as it sounds? No, it's rarely <laughs> fatal. Four in 2.5 million deaths. So, 2.5 million occurrences of nosebleeds, only four deaths. So, basically, yeah. it's not that Higher serious. Higher chances to down the road than, not, than of nosebleeds. Right, and uh, it is so culturally common. In fact, in Japan, mangas use nosebleeds to signify sexual harassment. Yes, that's true. Like, literally, when you see a sexy girl walking you, yeah, but <laughs> actually, kind of, it does have a coincidental effect because there are uh, elements in your nose that are sexually aroused as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting stuff. Okay. And asking for a nosebleed is a Finnish expression for doing something that's self-destructive. Asking for a nosebleed? Asking for a nosebleed. It's like you do something stupid and people say you're asking for a nosebleed. Okay, in Malay, we ah, This is in Finland. Nah. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> coming back to Malaysia, let's see yes. what nosebleeds are all about mm -hmm. here. Some say it's because of the weather, it's really hot and you start to bleed. Is that true? Well, we got a good doctor in the studio to mm -hmm. help us out. Mm -hmm. Let's say hello to Dr. Ng Teksiang, uh, ENT specialist from HKL. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, morning. Thank you for hearing us today. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. all right. Um, and uh, did I say that right? Is it not serious? Nosebleeds? <laughs> can <laughs> it be serious? Yeah, nosebleed can be severe can be not severe mm -hmm. and it basically nose bleeding can categorize the two types of bleeding one is anterior that means flan you're bleeding from the flan mm -hmm. and then the other one is posterior the bleeding from the back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so usually anterior bleeding is less severe but more frightening because you right. can see the blood you can see the blood you notice the blood coming out from the nose who not frightening i also frightening mm -hmm. right. Right. so when you see the blood don't panic the first thing you do is don't panic you must be, uh, what I call it, uh, 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 stay conscious mm -hmm. and don't. Mm -hmm. And then, if posterior bleeding usually signify there's something at the back or there's some other common com 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 like mm -hmm. like you have diabetes, hypertension, and when the vessel become hard, you know, when the pressure go out, you tend to break. And then, usually, it this happen at the posterior. And the posterior bleeding, uh, it can be due to the artery. Usually, anterior bleeding is just from the venous blood. The venous blood, as you know, is not less severe because it's less pressure and then less. Uh, it will stop by itself, self-limiting, and you don't have to do anything. You just put a pressure, then it will stop. It's not oxygenated blood. Ah, like uh, it's not okay. oxygenated. Blood. Let's talk about um, anterior mm -hmm. bleeding. So let's focus on that. What are the causes? Anterior bleeding usually, mainly by and large, is caused by the trauma. For example, you exercise. You uh, play games, you put a, uh, something, foreign body in your nose, or your nose breaking, all this will cause the anterior bleeding. Mm -hmm. Because in the septum, the center of the nose is called septum. There's a few vessels, there's many vessels that communicating each other at the area. We call it little area or mm -hmm. Kesebash places. That area is like, uh, example, this. usually we have skin to cover us, mm -hmm. but inside the nose, about uh, half, a, half a cm to one cm, there's no skin cover the septum, just the mucosa. You can see the diagram. Uh -huh. You can see the diagram. You can see the little, little area is in front. The top diagram is called little area. The red area, the circle, circle is the red area. There's many vessels that are communicating each other there. There's no skin cover it. Mm -hmm. Whenever there's a dry climax, uh, humidity is low, the air tends to flow in dry and it's a friction on the mucosa once it friction too much you will tear and start to breathe mm -hmm. that usually is a venous blood that is not artery usually okay. there's a venous blood so therefore you need to compress put a compression usually it will stop uh, then you look at the uh, lower diagram there's a that is the what i call it the, the the posterior bleeding posterior bleeding is usually happen in elderly patient or there's some are associated with some other diseases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for example you have tension diabetes mm -hmm. uh, the vessel tends to be harder you know? mm -hmm. then once the pressure go up you break you break then we start the break right. how do nosebleeds lead to vomiting what's the correlation uh, that how does the patient vomit vomiting mm -hmm. vomiting blood is uh, is uh, is usually from the posterior bleeding mm -hmm. uh, or when the uh, when the patient have anterior bleeding he tend to uh, uh, put the head fall up, 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 then the blood all will draw back into the throat, and then he start to vomit, vomit, keep in the stomach, uh, start to uh, swallow the blood, and then uh, uh, collect it in the stomach, and then he tend, tends to vomit out because the blood is not easy to digest. Mm. So, and, and then also the, uh, uh, I call it the posterior bleeding, then when the blood is too much, he will draw back into the throat and swallow it in the stomach, and then for, for a certain period, then he will start to vomit out. Mm -hmm. uh, vomit, blood, 
can be due to the nose bleeding, can be due to other and pathology. For example, right. the stomach mm -hmm. ulcer, all this. Uh, we are not going to touch on this. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, bleeding, anterior bleeding is come, coming from the nose. Posterior bleeding, you got blood stain saliva. Uh, he's got clear the throat, the blood will come out. Uh, it's called posterior bleeding. Oh, okay. So this is the digress show how we're going to pack the nose when there's a posterior bleeding. We okay. put the gauze, give some compression to the area. Uh, then we wait and see. Uh, before we further go for a further treatment, we, we usually try to be, be a bit conservative. We pack and see. And then we give some antibiotics. Uh, a week for a few days, usually he will stop. If not stop, then we have to do something for the patient. Okay. Uh, we have to go in and check whether there's a, a significant uh, abnormality, okay. whether there's a scope, whether there's a growth or not. Uh. Mm -hmm. This diagram shows there's the this is the back of the throat. When you put a camera inside, when you put a scope inside, you mm -hmm. see a lot of vessel. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the incision tube, mm -hmm. and then you see a lot of vessel coming down. Mm -hmm. This area is tends to break. Okay. That's why I mentioned this is posterior bleeding. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, now, uh, bleeding tends to clot. Yes. Uh, what are the dangers of clots forming inside your nose due to posterior bleeding? Will it get stuck with okay. clots? Okay. You when you're talking about posterior bleeding, uh, you're talking about complications. They tend to get some complication. Mm -hmm. For example, your airway compromise. Mm -hmm. You can aspirate the blood. Uh, you have uh, the pressure will come down. You have giddiness, and then also you have uh, what, what I call it. Uh, uh, if you are you are you high uh, hypertension uh, what you call it uh, ischemic heart disease heart problem you tend to get the uh, the ischemic uh, the attack heart attack you no know, because once your blood is coming down uh, fast and then uh, a lot then you will tend to get the complications uh. mm -hmm. that usually clog in the throat doesn't mean you 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 have any any uh, what you call it very severe problem it's still do some other things mm -hmm. uh, when mm -hmm. you start to uh, the as I mentioned your blood pressure will go down. Uh, then your airway compromise, especially the blood, that will cause you uh, some, uh, I mean, uh, can be serious, can be very serious, or can be mild. Okay. okay. Mm. How, um, uh, I understand this now you were telling us about, you know, anterior bleeding and, and uh, how, 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 how does it happen, but how, if we were to have too many times in a week, mm -hmm. is that something that we should, uh, is, is, it, is it dangerous? Or is it a warning light? Anterior bleeding, as I mentioned, most most of the time mm -hmm. is through the drum, tra trauma. Okay. Uh, you must rule out. Are you a habit of nose picking? Okay. Are you putting something in the nose? Mm -hmm. As for example, the children, mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. the total, when they're putting something in the nose, or is it the climax that you stay is too dry or humidity is too low? Okay. Are so that means the weather does play a part. Yes, the weather okay. play a part. Uh, pay apart. Then usually you must, as I mentioned, there's a friction on mm -hmm. the septum, right. the mucosa. Okay. It's because the the the, uh, the mucosa will break and then start to bleed. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are things you need to look out for. Yeah. Uh, going back to my basic first aid training, mm -hmm. when you find a casualty lying in the middle of the field, some mm -hmm. things you look for are bleeding noses and cerebrospinal fluid. Mm -hmm. How can you identify cerebrospinal fluid and uh, blood? Does it mix? No. Okay. Uh, you could. This call it uh, uh, cerebral spinal fluid is something uh, signify that there's a fracture uh, at the base of skull. Right. Uh, there's a base of skull. There's a sign for us to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, do mix it with epistasis mm -hmm. and the CSF lead. There's two different things. Okay, mm -hmm. two different things. Bleeding, you will see a lot of clot, blood coming, fresh blood, uh, mm -hmm. or venous blood coming up. CSF lead, you will see more likely it's like a bit a more diluted blood. I mean, uh, this. A bit clearer mm -hmm. with a stain of blood, or sometimes very clear fluid, like mm -hmm. a, just the running nose. There's two different things. Right. Uh, two different things. And then there's a sign on the around the eye. Mm -hmm. You can see the hematoma, bruises around the eye. That means signifies something is. I mean, uh, the base of skull is fractured. Mm -hmm. There's two different things, mm -hmm. uh, and the treatment is totally different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those okay. things you have to look out for. There's a different. There are different kinds of blood. Yes. There's the bright red blood, which mm -hmm. is probably oxygenated. That's probably from uh, anterior, from the normal an artery. Yeah. Uh, then posterior. there's the venous blood, which yes. is darker, yes. and yes. then there's the cerebrospinal Set. fluid, which yeah. is diluted. Diluted and then more clear. Well, the fluid, and then, I mean, the other fluid, you know, when you know, it like a fluid, more clear. Okay. Uh. And usually in those type of cases, do you have to make a decision like a quick one, there and there, and advice to the okay, medical first of, experts? First of all, we must identify what is the cause, what is the cause of bleeding. Is it just a simple trauma? Or just a, uh, or, or it's a very complex case. Uh, okay. it's a, let's say in a motor vehicle accident, right. uh, definitely this is not that simple. Right. Uh, it's just they fell down, 
that's very simple uh, or just nose breaking that's very simple is there's a just a simple case uh, there's a few procedure that should be imparted to the patients uh, first of all you must uh, you must uh, keep yourself relaxed don't panic you can frighten but don't try not to uh, too much of panic and anxious uh, you sit up with the head bent down and then put a, put a pressure on the nose just with the in thumb and the index finger put it firmly on the nostril in front compress it firmly and then if possible get some ice put in the plastic open a towel and wrap it up and then put on the one hand with one hand hold and then put on the top of the nose hmm. and then one ice cube put in the nose so you just bend page put the ice there put it in the mouth and then most of the time for five to ten minutes most of the time it will stop there is simple simple anterior bleeding mm -hmm. if something more serious this won't, won't it stop. won't stop it won't stop and then it come up very fast I and see. then uh, not only that the, I mean the, 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 the mouth also come out okay. and talking about CSF leak then it year also sometimes you see the bleeding that is uh, the sign that this this is very simple. This is not a simple case. This mm -hmm. could be a very complex. Mm -hmm. So it leaks from the nose mm -hmm. and the ears. Yeah, mm -hmm. that when you the pet just now the photo show you, mm -hmm. if bleeding from the posterior or the uh, very uh, what you call it, tissues bleeding, then you have really have the pet inside. Mm -hmm. Don't wait anymore okay. because if, if let's say you wait for five minutes to ten minutes, the the brain will mm -hmm. ischemic. Right. Um, doc, do you have a problem? People coming up to you having gone through um doing prevention treatment or even holistic approach you know uh, sometimes chinese and malays you know, have uh, kampung style of tre treating it gets worse they they go to you have you seen that type of cases before usually usually when there's be patients saw the blood see the blood they, they really wouldn't, do they wouldn't they will stay away come to medical treatment <laughs> mm. let's say they go to that uh, the 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 what you call traditional medicine i i have no idea what they're doing but mm -hmm. uh it's due to some other thing, let's say they are tumor, mm. there's some other thing, they think the our 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 medicine is uh, cause more complications, side effect, then the treatment I mean then the, the treatment itself, usually they will go for some other traditional medicine. But we try to advise the patient not to do that. Mm. Because the moment you wait longer, it's more difficult for us to treat. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost the cost and the diagnosis is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, you must really educate the patient, inform the patient that what are you going to have? Mm -hmm. What are you having and what are you going to have? So we must really, really sit down and talk to the patient mm -hmm. about the cause of the bleeding. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you're obviously a proponent for modern medicine, uh, but in uh, kampongs and of course villages, Malays and Indians, mm -hmm. uh, there's these things called sire leaves, which are used to stop the nosebleeds. Is that effective, putting something in your nose just to stop the nosebleed? Basically, anything, anything that can compress the vessel, we call it compression, to seal off the brick, the the, the, the brick of the in the in the vessel, that will helps. Mm -hmm. uh, what material they use, I have no idea. But what we use, what we use using in the hospital, usually is something is sterile, clean, and then antiseptic. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're talking, you plug the plant, put the nose. That one I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I cannot yeah. comment I can on that. I see it does uh, have antiseptic properties, but again, we're talking about the sterile environments yes, and so forth. Yes, yes, there's yes. something that to prevent the infection. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes. So, doctor, um, for our climate <coughs> in Malaysia, it's a bit warm. Mm -hmm. It can get really hot. Yes. Uh, are there occurrences of epistaxis that happen randomly just because of the weather? Uh, in Malaysia, the 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 epistaxis caused by the weather, I don't think is uh, common. Mm -hmm. Because our weather is warm and then humidity also not that low, you know. So the the only that only not only that if the patient there's uh, some uh, problem in the septum, mm -hmm. then uh, what you call inside the nose, there's some pathology. There's somebody that the septum deviated. There's a hypertrophy. I mean uh, the hypertrophy, the inferior turbinate, you know, mm -hmm. or some other uh, thing inside the nose that can cause the the flow of the air. I mean uh, the the flow of the air to the inside the, to the nose into the nose there's disturbed mm -hmm. usually there is turbulence flow mm. huh? and then the then, 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 then if the flow is disturbed it will st start to have the friction that I mentioned friction to the septum and then you will cause many many types of friction then it will break then ah, you start okay. to break bleeding okay. uh, and okay. so what are we looking at right now doctor? Okay. Happen to oh, this is the anterior uh, septum mm. this is called little area you can see a lot of vessels that communicate communicating each other that is called Kesebach, I mean, uh, uh, what you call it, that little area, Kesebach mm -hmm. uh, pleasures. Kesebach mm -hmm. pleasures is the area that uh, inside the about one cm uh, from the nose, uh, inside the nose at the center. It's called anterior, anterior, uh, what you call it, uh, bleeding. Mm. This is more to the posterior bleeding. This area is the near to the 
uh, what I call it, the uh, spin-off pantai area. It's more, this more likely to be the posterior bit, but this this can see the type of bleeding is more to a trauma. Uh, with the, the pain, right. the Doctor, pain. maybe you can help alleviate this myth. We're looking at sexy women give you nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that one, I, I have no idea. <laughs> it dip, maybe it depends on different humid, different climate or different... Different climate the women are in Different or? countries <laughs> all together. Well, uh, to find this up, Doctor, your final word of advice for Malaysians watching yes, in I the case of a nosebleed. Okay, as I say, when you have nosebleed, try not to panic. Mm. Most of the time, I mean, the, in young, we're talking about age group, huh? in infant, in infant less than two years old, if there's a bleeding, I think I strongly suggest you go get the patient, get it, uh, I mean, send the patient to the hospital and get it, uh, get it investigated. Huh? Usually, the infant, the bleeding, uh, from the nose could be due to uh, your blood blood uh, disease mm -hmm. or can be due uh, to some other pathology. It's not okay. that simple. Huh? Okay. If uh, uh, a more uh, bigger children or total, usually they will have the fallen body. They put inside something inside the nose. Mm -hmm. well, then you cause a bleeding or nose breaking. Huh? Usually they start, they start to use the hand. Huh? They will put inside the nose then, or they prick, prick the yeah. nose. It will, it will injure the septum. Then it will cause a bleeding. In uh, more adult patients, usually they are due to trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, they exercise, they play games, uh, they, they, they injure the nose and the, and the nasal bone, then they will have bleeding. And the elderly patient, more, more el I mean elderly patient usually they have the diseases. For example, they have tension, uh, they have the, this, uh, uh, they're taking uh, aspirin or some medication for their heart problem or some other medical problem, or they have diabetes, the vessel things tends to be like hardened yes, and yes, injured, yes. you know, it tends to break easily when the pressure go up. Uh, so overall, Try not to panic when there's a bleeding. Okay. Uh, usually, just put the, as I advise, put the compression on the septum, ice, ice, and put one ice cube in the mouth and wait five to ten minutes. And bear in, bear in mind, you can bend the head down. Mm -hmm. Don't raise up your head because raise your head will cause the it blood drawing into your throat and then yes. you swallow it. You start okay. to throw it, you start to vomit, they make you more panic. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you so much, doctor, for being on the show with Thank us. You. And Thank uh, you. yeah, we, we shared some of the myths in Japan. It's about looking at sexy women and <laughs> getting a nosebleed. <laughs> in the Philippines, it's about solving an intellectual problem and getting really, you know, stressed up. And, and that having a nosebleed. nosebleed. And in Malaysia, I think if people will say when your body is too hot, uh, too yeah. warm, you'll get a nosebleed. Well, yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Myths busted on Apistaxis. Thank you so much, doctor, for being on the show Thank with you. us.